quick. The whole point of my talk show is to show you that even with having a word of disability, I can style them out to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be to prove them. Stem out to something. Hi, I'm Philip Cairns. I'm an actor, a writer, and a visual artist. And I've just been interviewed by Keith Andrew. And I had a wonderful time. I think his show's great. And I think he's great. And I think you should, it would be great for you to watch his show as often as possible because it's very entertaining and very informative. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keith Andrew and welcome to episode 977. That is right, 977. It's a holiday theme on the Keith Andrew Network. Today, we sit down with professional actor and writer. You heard it from his recommendation. So let's start with the interview. The first question I want to ask you is tell our audience a little bit about your background and how you came to do what you do. Well, I've been um, acting since I was 11. I would have started earlier, except my parents didn't really uh, want me to do it because I wanted to act from the age of four. Um, and I went, I, I had an agent when I was 11. I didn't really get any work. And then I studied and did some plays when I was 13 and 14. And then I did theater in, uh, in high school. And then after um, high school, I was sort of pressured by my parents to become a hairdresser to, because I said, I want to be an actor. And they said, well, you have to have something to fall back on. So I learned how to be a hairdresser. But when you're a hairdresser, you work 12 hour days. So it's not really compatible with being an actor. You can't just say, oh, bye, I've got to go to an audition. So I went to India in, when I was 20 and, you know, to sort of find myself. And when I came back, I realized I, I needed to be an actor, I needed to be a painter, and I needed to be a writer. I needed to give up the hairdressing and, 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 and work on that full time. So I did. So I've been doing theater, film, TV since I, you know, was uh, 21, you know, professionally. You know, and uh, you oh, know, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. I've had I, I've had my ups and downs, like anybody. I'm not a star, but you know, I've been working consistently. You know, since I was 21. It's, I didn't mean to interrupt. But it's funny because you said uh, we have that really in common for 21. Because when I turned 21, people are like, "Oh, it's the most special birthday. What do you want to have?" I'm like, "Well, I don't drink." I don't drive. Well, first off, I do not encourage people to drink and drive. That's a big no. And I'm like, well, I don't drink. I don't care for driving. I have my health. I have my family. And people say, for your 21st birthday, you shouldn't do something very special. So I came up with the idea of, well, it's going to sound like an oxymoron. I want to become famous. Or for a long time for using my disability as a crutch, I said, you know what? If this is something I want to do for the rest of my life, instead of using my disability as a weakness, I'm going to use it as a strength. Not to bore you with the whole story, didn't give me the quick highlights, but since I think 2010, 2012, I, I get the numbers right afterwards. This is what I've been doing. And I've been showing everyone from 2000 and June of 2013. This from day one, I had a lot of ups. I had a lot of downs, but eventually knock on wood, you will find the right niche to what you did. And you mentioned you're 21 and you found the right uh, area of work that you wanted to do. So I think that's really funny. We have that both in common. What's the, what's the number? 21. Maybe it's a significant age for a lot of people. I don't know, but it certainly was for me. That's true. And a lot of people say about 13, oh, what were you born on? My mom got this all lot. Oh, were you born on the 13th? Were you born on Friday the 13th? It's like, hey, but in the Jewish community, 13 is a lucky number. So. Hey, you know what? I've been 
doing my show since 2013, knock on wood, I don't care what anyone says. It's a lucky number to me so far. <laughs> but it's not about me, this is about you. But the next one I want to ask is what, I know you mentioned your parents said you have to have a backup plan. Obviously everyone does, but why did you want to be a hairdresser? I didn't. I was forced into it by my parents. I, I, uh, I, I sort of, I, I tell you this, I, I, to be totally honest, I had, uh, I was very confused about my gender. I thought I wanted to be a woman. And so my plan was if I, if I, how am I going to get the money for the operation? Uh, so I'll, I'll be a hairdresser, I'll pay for the operation, then I'll become an actress, right? And luckily that didn't happen because I, I, uh, it wasn't the right thing for me to do, you know? So, um, there is that aspect to, to it, but I, no, I didn't, I hated hairdressing actually. I, I didn't, I didn't like it at all. I, I wanted to act. Well, you bring up a good point and, um, Actually, I, I keep my thoughts to myself, but you actually bring up a good point. With everything going on, and you can say pass on this, with everything going on with the LK, LTBG community, what is your outlook? Because you mentioned you are a writer, and you mentioned you are an actor. So does that play a factor when people will audition you for certain roles? Do you get stereotyped? It's funny you should say it, you should ask that because I had an agent, oh God, maybe 20 years ago, and she didn't really want to take me on. And she, I sort of whined my way into her roster. And she, you know what she said to me? She said, You present as being gay, and most of the gay characters that come through my, through the breakdowns are murderers, and I can't see you as being a murderer, so I don't want to take you on. And so, you know, 20 years ago, things were a lot different. This could even be 25 years ago. But, and I had another casting director say to me, I, I, she had a drop in policy where you could just drop into her office. And I, after maybe four or five times, I dropped in. She said to me, I know you want to do movies and TV, but, and the but was, you know, you, you're not straight acting enough. She didn't say that, but that was what she was implying. You know, I mean, you couldn't get away with that kind of talk nowadays. It would be considered, you know, offensive, right? But, you know, I, I just thought in, in theater, it's a little different because there's a lot of gay men in theater. In film and TV, it's a very macho environment. And I mean, now there's lots of LGBT and trans characters, right, in, in, in film and TV. But back in the day, there weren't, you know. So being, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a butch guy. And, and, and so it, it, it's limited me in film and TV, definitely. You know, I mean, I, I couldn't really play Romeo, you know. But on the same time, I, I've played women. Or I've played, uh, yeah, i played women. I played uh, Titania in, in uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. And I, I loved it, you know. Um, I don't know how that would work nowadays. But you see, I don't really consider myself male or female. I think of myself as a human being. That is, you know, my, my, I say my gender is Philip Cairns. That is my gender, you know? It's because I don't think, I don't, I don't resonate with either gender. I don't feel, you know, I, I don't, I don't feel like I'm a man or a woman. And I also think it's irrelevant, you know? Because I think when you die, your, your spirit is, is, is genderless, you know? The reason I think we have gender on that planet is so that people can procreate, right? You know? We're all the you know, we, you have to find some ways so that the species can continue. Well, let me so ask you a question. It's, sorry, go on. I was gonna, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt, but let me ask you a stupid question. I know I'm probably gonna get some feedback from this. Obviously, you're a guy, but yeah. you um, relate to both. So, if you get married, how does that work? Well, I'm attracted to men, basically. But um, I'm also... I, 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 don't, I, I don't really believe in the institution of marriage. You know, I think, I think staying with one person and being monogamous for your whole life is 
BS, you know? <laughs> I, I, I just, it, to me, it, 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 I mean, I've never met the right person, you know? Um, so I, I wouldn't, I mean, I'm 69 years old I, I, and I'm, I've never been married and I don't really intend to. I mean, you know, tomorrow I could meet somebody, but I'm, you know, I'm not holding my breath, right? You know? So does that answer your question? <laughs> No, that's okay. I didn't mean any disrespect by it. Sure, of course. You know, like on the Key Fancy Network, we ask hard-hidden questions. And we like to have fun with it, too. So we ask anything and everything. And I throw myself underneath the bus. He mentioned about 20 years ago. You know, even today, I was like, hey, I'm a talk show host who has a learning disability. I'm on the spectrum of being retarded because I fall under the spectrum. You know, on the spectrum, off the spectrum, but whatever, I'm near the spectrum. So when I tell people, hey, I read and learn at fifth grade level, but look at what I accomplished, they say there's no one in the history of broadcasting or podcasting or in the entertainment industry that has a disability and that does what you're doing. And you know what? It pleases me to be the first to show you but labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. And I will prove to you, I can sell them out to something. And you know, I'm 34 and I'm still looking for the right person. You know, a lot of beautiful women out there, but uh, you know, there's a voice in the back of your head saying, why would she go out with you? You have a disability. What do you have to offer? You know, I would like to have the same body as The Rock and John Cena. You know, I'm skinny uh, as a twig, but <laughs> I, that's my body. That's my goal to be buff. Uh, but, you know, maybe one day, maybe another, but alternative reality, as you said, when we die, we are energy and you cannot destroy energy. Energy will be recreated and reformed in something else. Unless you believe in reincarnation and you come back as a freaking bird's nest or something. Uh, but do you, you know what? I'm hoping, yes. I'm hoping that, uh, like, I don't consider this is the only populated planet in the universe. I think there must be billions of them, and I'm hoping if I reincarnate that I don't have to come here, that I can go <laughs> somewhere. You know, all this BS isn't happening. You know, I mean, there must be some place in the universe where people can get along and not be dropping nuclear bombs on each other. You know, because. Uh, things seem to be getting so bad on this planet you know it's like think of los angeles you have these people in huge mansions and then you have people living in pup tents you know that's, to me that's that's wrong you know you know what? the rich are getting richer and, and the poor are getting poorer but you know what pisses me off and it's a good subject because i'm going to ask you about life in space in a minute you know people say you know and I'm not saying I'm perfect or anything, but when I hear this, it really drives me up a freaking wall for that. Oh, yeah. I used to work over a retail store and if this person would buy, you know, food and supplies and I'm like, okay, this is really good. And then it's a, and up in the calm season, she works for a charity. And like, yeah, we're going to help people in Africa. And man, that's great. That's wonderful. You want to help people in other countries, but if you can't help yourself first, then you can't help other people. If you took every single homeless person off the street and you put them in the army, you gave them retail jobs, you just put them, you know, in the working community, you will not have a big homeless um, population in New York or Los, especially in Los Angeles. If you get people off the street and back to work in, things will be better. And of course, you know, once it's all better and wonderful and you don't have the homeless population to worry about, then yes, I do see the fact you can help other people. But just the fact you're shoving it in people's faces, but you're helping people overseas, when you have homeless people on the streets, that can't pay for rent, can't pay for medical, and they're like, the hell was them, we're gonna help these people. Does that make any sense to you? Yes, I, I live in Toronto, and the rents here are becoming insane. So if you have a, a minimum wage job, you can't afford to rent an apartment, 
you know? You have to have a roommate, you know, in a one bedroom apartment, you know? Or two people in the bachelor. I mean, it's not, it's not right, you know? And in New York City, you have like six, five and six people living in a two bedroom apartment who are unrelated to each other, you know? They're each paying a thousand dollars because the rent's five thousand dollars, you know, for, for a two or one bedroom apartment. And, and if you're earning minimum wage, you know, you, you can't afford to have your own place. So even having a job, I mean, some people have three jobs, you know, just to pay all their bills, you know. To me, that's wrong. It's just, it's, it's not right. I mean, when I, I, I live in a place called Parkdale, and in, um, when I moved in here in 1983, I was paying $240 a month in rent for my apartment. I mean, you know, you couldn't even get, rent a closet for that now, you know. <laughs> so, so the I don't it, it, inflation is, is is just getting in, insane. And then you read about these billionaires; they're worth 139 billion dollars. You know, it's like what? You know, I've got like you know 600 dollars in the bank. You know, <laughs> you know Thanks my net worth is like you know like two thousand dollars or something. <laughs> you know, it's more than what I have. <laughs> <laughs> if, but you know, see something really interesting, and anyone who's watching, look up the smallest apartments. I actually have seen Canada would probably fall under this, but I haven't looked. But in New York, the smallest apartment in New York is six hundred dollars. It's it looks cozy, but you walk in, you have a toilet if you're lucky, uh, and a bed. It's a small closet for six hundred dollars in Manhattan. And it's kind of like, really? But minimum, to answer your question, minimum wage should go up. You know, I believe it should be $20 an hour because you can't live on $15 an hour. I guess, you know, it, what gets me is these people, they're, they're so greedy. It's like, I mean, who even needs a billion dollars, you know? What are you going to do, buy, buy an airplane every day? buy a 747 every day you know what do you need a billion dollars for you know I, I i mean there comes a point where you've got enough money you know that's true and that's the big thing people are like oh i have four houses i, I mean it's nice you want to have two houses okay that's a little close in it but if you have two houses you have a summer house and a winter house you don't need four houses you don't need 10 um, Lamborghinis or wet, um, Jaguar cars. I work in a place in Tuxedo Park. And it's really nice. It's a dated, gated community. And this guy's like, oh, I said to you know, this person, that's really a beautiful house. And it's like, that's not a house. That's a garage for his Mercedes. And I'm like, how many freaking Mercedes do you need? And it's, it's so nauseating. And it's... Anyway, now, go to another subject. But think about it. If rich people help poor people, it will cut the problem right there. You really wouldn't have a homeless population. But people only care about themselves, and that's the problem. There's apparently a guy in Toronto who owns something like 40,000 houses, or 140,000 houses, like some ridiculous amount. I mean, that, that I, I don't... I mean, I, I know he rents them out. I mean, he doesn't, they aren't, he's not living in all of them, but <laughs> I think some people, they, I think it becomes a sickness. Greed becomes a sickness, you know? It's like it's like a, being addicted to a drug. You can't get enough of it, you know? You just, it's like being, uh, you want more and more and more and more and more, you know? Well, you can't fix stupid, but you can numb it with a two by four. And if speaking about hopefully the orange great pumpkin doesn't become president again. You're only you know shit's hitting the fan right now. That's only gonna be worse. But the next one Are you in the States? Yes, I live in New York. Okay. So the next one I'll actually let me ask you while we're on um talk about politics if you if, if I may, I'd like to hear your opinion because you're in Canada. What is your opinion about the Orange Great Pumpkin? Obviously, he is, he's a spy. You know, he's a, a Russian puppet. But do you think people are just crazy? That's why people like him so much? Because they're crazy? I don't know if 
that's so much. I, I mean, I, I'm not a Trump supporter. I mean, I, I no, I'm I, I consider myself a left wing progressive person, and him. I, I think the man's. I, I don't know. I think he's insane. You know, I think he's 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 delusional, and. Um, And the people who support him, I, I don't get it, you know? I, I sort of think there, some people, they, they, they think that if they work really, really hard, that they're going to become rich, you know? And it, it's a myth, you know? I mean, sure, a lot of people become rich, but it's not the norm, right? The norm is most people are working class, you know? They they work and they pay their bills and they, you know, I mean, I, I you know, I, I run a deficit every month, you know, I run out of money before the end of every month, you know, and go into overdraft, it's, you know, that's just the way it is. Um, I, I, to me, being a Canadian, I look at the States and I go, <laughs> my god i don't i don't want to live there they're nuts you know people say in canada they say they're nuts in the states they're nuts you know i mean you've got so many millions of people who said i mean you don't even have democracy hillary hillary clinton won got the most votes but she didn't become president you know you have this thing what's it called the electoral college yeah which is like it made sense in 1860 or whenever it was or whenever it was you know but that's because the southern states didn't have as many people or something i don't i don't think but it doesn't make any sense in 2022 to have the electoral college in in my humble opinion you know it's it's not d democracy you know i mean you have 10 million people vote it should be 10 million votes right you know and, and the, the person who gets the most votes becomes president right you know and having a two we have a three we have three major party political parties in 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 canada and then you have a lot of you know sort of bizarre or very very extreme candidates you know but you have basically uh just two parties right yeah in the states it's and, a uh, republicans or democrats there is a rumor of a third party i hope there is but hey if canada can pull it off and we can do it too oh no i mean i i voted in the last election there was about i don't know 20 candidates you know uh, it was a municipal election but still even in a, a federal or provincial election you have you know 15 candidates you don't just have two you know i i, I used to I, I, as an actor i used to you know want to be in la or new york because that but you know so many tv shows and films are made in in toronto now i mean it's a huge mecca now because they they get a tax break you know so they it's cheaper for them to shoot in toronto even with hotel bills and all that stuff than it is for them to shoot in la although i know some states have these uh tax breaks as well but no toronto i mean to be an actor in toronto now is fabulous there's there's tons of work there's there's tons of theater there's there's radio there's internet stuff and there's lots of films being made so you don't need to go to la anymore, you know i mean I mean, I, I knew an actress who went down to L.A. to make it big and she got a part in a movie. Guess where they shot it? In Toronto. So she came back to Toronto to shoot the movie, you know, and that's where she was from. So um, what was your question? <laughs> well, actually, you bring up good two points. You know, L.A. is really nice. Eventually, I will go there. But what's the point? It's well, with climate change, it's going to be unwivable, number one. Uh, they, a lot of people say they can take water from the ocean, like Israel, and convert it into drinking water. But 110, 120 degrees, you know, you don't have water in LA. You're on God's extra sketch board, but you're always getting freaking earthquakes. Uh, New York, you know, New, New York, right now, New York is a cesspool. But here, here's some story. I don't know if you saw. Um, I think it was like CBS or uh, Fox or uh, NBC or whatever. Um, this guy was arrested. He's, he's mentally disturbed. He went out, he, he went and killed his woman. And instead of shooting the woman, he shot a 96 year old guy in a wheelchair. So he got arrested and then he got out, he let him out. And then he did the same thing again. He killed two other people. And the guy's like, 
Oh yeah, yeah, I know that person. He was arrested 12 times. Arrested 12 times? What the hell are you doing on, out on the street? And then you have other people who are arrested 15 times, 35 times. It's, it's a sick joke because right now, the no bail war, it's complete bullshit. You should bring back mental institutions. If you're insane, lock your ass up. We need people to arrest people, not say, okay, give you a slap on the west and don't do it again. It, it's, a, it's a sick joke. It's like, really? He was arrested 15 times? Why is he still out on the street? I don't think Toronto has that problem. Your prison system, I think, is different from ours because you're, they're privately run in the states, are they not? They're not government run. They're private institutions. They're profit making. So I could, I mean, there's some guy who's in prison for 56 years for selling weed, right? And weed's legal now in most, in many states, and yet he's still in prison. You know, it's like that's not right, and it's probably because they want the money. You know, because the government pays you know, pays to have him in prison, right? They pay the people who own the prison, who the corporations that own it. So it it it, it seems like they want they want to have criminals because because the prison system is big bucks. It's a big, you know, big money making institution, the prison system, you know? So it's like, yeah, you know, kill my mother so we can get your money, you know? To be in prison. We want more prisoners, you know? So I think recently there's a news story where this guy who climbed on top of a um, one of those buses was a frame flower. And I was like, really? There's no, I'm not saying, I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat, but there should be a fact that we shouldn't have people that push each other in front of trains that do harm to each other. These people should not be out on the street. And having someone run around with an AK-47 and saying, well, that's the new normal. You know, it's a sign of mental illness. And as New York City really is a sign of mental illness and the mayor is not doing a job and people are just stupid, <laughs> but with the last three minutes, I'm going to pass it over to you. Was there anything you want to talk about? Um, yeah, I want to talk about, how about my book. I have a book out <laughs> called Hollywood Poems and Other Diversions, which you can get in uh, from Amazon. It's uh, poems about Elizabeth Taylor, Anita Ekberg, uh, lots of old-time movie stars. And then there's a, a comical section uh, uh, uh called bed bugs and cockroaches were sort of their stories and poems about they're very funny about cockroaches and bed bugs and how they interact with people and stuff like that so that book is available uh to your viewers uh, it's not expensive like 17.99 um and uh i have a website philipcarens.com uh, p-h-i-l-i-p-c-a-i-r-n-s.com and uh i have um some of my artwork is on it um, and my, my poetry, I desperately need to update it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little out of date, but, um, I don't, you know, life happens, right? No, absolutely. Now, I do have a couple questions for you off the air. But if you're watching on all social medias, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and LinkedIn, make sure to like and subscribe. Now, one thing I do want to clarify, we on the Key Vanjie Network, talk about everything and everything so if you have your emotions on your sleeve maybe we're not for us here but that being said the opinions of the hosts and opinions of the guests do not reflect the key, the key fancy network brand we're here to have a good time share our stories and support people with disabilities that being said Freedom of speech, self-expression. As long as you're not hurting anyone, it's just good. It can, you can think about it like it's a therapy session. And in a way, it's entertainment. So we're here to have fun. Don't take anything seriously. But like I said, at the end of the day, we live only once. But with that being said, it was a real honor and privilege 
having you as a guest. All of your social media big links will be on the bottom of the description, will be in the description. And until we meet again, thank you for being a guest on our show, and I'll catch you later.